Hello, this is I Do Damage, and welcome back to the channel. In this Torben Realms video, I want to talk to you about crafting. Before we start, though, I want to do a big shout out and a thank you to Symbio. He is part of the Damage Crew Fellowship, and he's provided a lot of knowledge and information to me that we're going to be sharing in this video. Thank you, dude, for helping out and spreading the knowledge. He kind of is the one that kind of lit that spark in my head of these special modifiers that you can craft that I'm really excited to talk to you about in this video. I also want to thank the Damage Crew Fellowship for everyone's hard work and everyone kind of teaming up to help out and level up the Fellowship. It's really been a great season so far. I think our Fellowship is ranked six currently on the ladder, and I just want to thank you guys for that. It's been super awesome. Hopefully everyone's enjoying the start of Season 19. Let's go ahead and talk about Dwarven Realms crafting. If you've been playing the game, you should already know this, but just in case if anyone new is watching, as you're playing through each ruptures and you're breaking down trees, ores, and picking up plants, you're going to be getting raw materials. And you can craft them into actual crafting materials at these three stations here, the plank station, the furnace, and the mortar. Refining raw materials will not provide you crafting experience, and neither will crafting gems or keys or anything pretty much over at these stations. These will not give you crafting experience. And the reason that's really important is because the thing I'm really excited to talk about in this video is the special modifiers you can find on orange gear. In order to be able to have these modifiers show up, you have to level up your crafting and unlock this perk here called Bane of the Blacksmith. This will allow you to be able to craft incredible modifiers on your bracers, amulets, boots, and helmets. That's only four item slots that can roll these special modifiers. So the fun of this is figuring out what four modifiers you want and getting them on those four slots. This is just the current state of the game is only these four slots you can get these modifiers on. I think they plan to change that in the future. So that leaves six gear slots open that are going to be your stance slot. And what I mean by that is if you hear someone say stance, that just means what weapon you're using. I'm using one handed weapons, so my stance is a duelist. So the six item slots that are going to be your stance gear is going to be your chest, legs, gloves, two rings, and your relic. These are going to be your stance slots. And then the four slots that will be the special modifiers are going to be your amulet, bracer, boots, and helmet. Crafting is really important to level up in this game, not only just for that perk, but once you get to the lost path at 1,500 crafting level, when you're in ruptures and breaking nodes, you'll actually unlock another side dungeon. We're not going to go in depth in that in this video, but perhaps in the future we will. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video. Let's keep going here though. So crafting, we're going to go ahead and break this down for you. The absolute best way to level up crafting, in my opinion, is through Dwarven Runes. And the reason for this is they're very low cost. The main amulet we're going to be crafting with these runes is going to be the Amulet of the Druid. This is going to be your amulet that you're going to be crafting loads and loads of to get those special modifiers once you have that perk unlocked. Up until that point, though, you can craft any of these that you really want to. I think Amulet of the Druid rolls the highest item level, though. Keep in mind here at the Jewelry Station, you also are going to be crafting your stance rings here as well, which do have a steeper cost of a thousand Dwarven runes and that legendary glowing stone. Now, you're not going to be spam crafting your stance rings because you can just re-roll it if you want to at the re-roll station. Although I don't really recommend that. I kind of just early on, you're going to just want your stance, your two stance rings and kind of just keep them up to date every 10 to 15 rupture levels. One other thing to keep in mind is before you have Bane of the Blacksmith unlocked, you could craft your stance necklace if you want. I think it might be a little bit more damaged since you can't find any of the special modifiers anyway until you have that perk unlocked. But once that perk's unlocked, yeah, Amulet of the Druid is going to be your answer. The Dwarven runes used to craft these are really simple to get, and you can get loads and loads of them. You can craft them over here at the Alchemy Cauldron by using each biome stone. Now, one biome stone will give you 75 Dwarven runes. You can also craft those biome stones over here from using materials. And these materials you're going to find inside of a rupture just from looting containers, breaking objects. You're going to find a lot of them. Convert those raw materials into your stones, and then the stones then can be used to craft a catacomb key if you want to. I do have a video covering the catacomb dungeon as well. If you haven't checked that out, I do recommend it after you finish this video. However, the catacomb key has a really steep cost, and I feel like you can find catacomb keys way easier and that all of these stones are better used on the Dwarven runes that we're talking about. The other thing I want to point out, and I know someone's thinking it, is those Dwarven runes, you can use 8,000 of them and imbue them into one imbued Dwarven rune. 
I don't recommend spending 8,000 runes for that because you're going to be finding these things all the time, especially in higher ruptures. You're going to be finding a lot of them. Early on, maybe if you need an extra one to maybe do the enclave to get your belt or something like that, maybe. But yeah, I think 8,000 Dwarven runes would be a waste right here. I think you're way better off using those runes to level up your crafting through that amulet of the druid. So that's your jewelry slot covered, your ammy and your two rings. Let's go ahead and talk about bracers real quick here. So bracers are all crafted from animal parts. Now there are stance bracers you can craft. However, I don't recommend it. Early on, if you can craft the bat bracers, these are gonna be your best choice because you don't wanna waste your alligator, bear, tiger, and raptor materials until you can craft those special perks. Once you've unlocked the perk that we keep talking about here in your crafting skill tree, the two bracers you're gonna to wanna to craft is Dorvan bracers and bracers of might. Those are the highest item level and they can also get those special mods. The stance bracers, I just don't recommend crafting. The other thing to note here on bracers is this is not a great option for leveling up your crafting skills, but if you're really in a rush to get to that perk, you could use some materials on it. It's one of those games where you're just gonna get more materials anyway, so it's nothing to be stressed or anxious about. It's all good, man, it's all gonna work out in the end. And real quick, I just want to point out the relic. We're not going to go in depth on this one in the video. This one you can craft at the end of a rupture. There's usually a big stone. You can go in there and craft one. I think you get them other places as well, but it's the relic's not a big part of crafting, but that's an item slot that you can make, as I said, at the end of a rupture. And that's just going to be your stance relic. Let's go ahead and talk about armor that you craft over here at the workbench. The first two item slots I want to talk about is your helmet and boots. These are the two slots that can roll that incredible modifier. And so you're going to want to be crafting the orange items here and not the purple items. So the Helen boots, unfortunately, do use the exact same material. And the recipe you're going to want to be looking for is the mirror stone. So the mirror stone plate helmet. And then for your boots, it's the mirror stone plate boots. Now, each of these costs 20 flawless residue diamonds to craft. It is a pretty low cost and you will find a lot of this residue from just completing ruptures and disenchanting items at the disenchanting station again you probably know about this but if it's your first time ever watching a video on dorman realms maybe you don't this is the disenchanting station you just come in here whenever you have stuff to disenchant and you click all those it'll put it in and you'll get materials the purple and orange items are going to be what's going to give you your legendary and your residue here as well now your helmet and pants they also have stance options as well if you want to but those do cost a hefty 375 legendary stones. Don't recommend crafting those for leveling up or anything. I recommend just holding on to all of your residue until you've unlocked that crafting perk for these item slots. That leaves us with the last three slots, the chest piece, legs, and gloves. These are all stance slots, so these are really simple. You just go to the slot you want to craft. So if it's chest, you're going to find your stance slot. And again, I'm running one hand, so my stance is a duelist. The stance is literally just what weapon you're using is all that means. So I would want to craft this. Now keep in mind your stance gear does require a lot of those legendary stones. So you're not going to want to be spamming these to level up really either. That's pretty much going to be your stance items there for your chest, gloves, and pants. Is just looking in here for the mythical stance that you're using. I think Berserker's two-handed major this sojus i don't even know how you say this sojus suist that's my good attempt at pronouncing that word someone out there's got to know how to say it better than me that one is spears I actually ran that last season uh ranger is going to be your bow and arrow templar i'm assuming is maul i don't know what this one is yeah duelist is your one hand i'm guessing a erudut is the ma mage one maybe i don't know with wands i'm not totally sure but yeah, that's, that's going to be your stance. Those are going to be your main crafting recipes. One other thing I wanted to point out, I mentioned earlier in the video, I'd go a little bit more in depth with leveling up crafting. And I just wanted to make sure I touched on that. So everything I've showed you so far is going to use most of your materials, but it's not going to be using those materials that you've refined from raw materials. So you want to make sure you're using those to level up your crafting, right? So the way that I recommend doing that is just coming into here and finding any of these recipes. These recipes are crap. They're literally just for crafting XP and you're going to want to craft them. Now, if it costs any fire shards, do not craft it because you're going to be using that to make your desolate stone. So don't use those. But any of these other ones that are just crappy, just 
make them pretty much just to burn through these mats. If anyone knows of a better use for these materials, by all means, please let me know down in the comments. And one other option you have for leveling up crafting that I think worth pointing out is by crafting off hands. So off hands are your three items here at the bottom that proc your abilities. You cannot craft belts currently. The belt is from the underground enclave, but your goblet, your horn, and your trinket, you can actually craft over here at the offhand crafting station. These do require that legendary stone. It's only 10 of them, it's not that bad. And then the certain scrap for whatever slot it is and the element. Now, if you're like me, I like to pick one element and really kind of stick to it. And this season I am going fire. So if I have excess arcane and lightning, you can actually convert those for a three to one ratio. So I can get rid of my unwanted arcane scraps here and turn them into fire. You can also do that for lightning as well. The other way that you obtain all of these materials for that offhand crafting station is through disenchanting offhand items that you don't want. That's how you get those materials. So now that you know all about crafting, and just to recap here, your item slots are as follows. Helmet is going to be an orange modifier slot, and we'll show some orange items off here. Don't worry, we'll get to the really juicy stuff so you have some stuff to look forward to. Your helmet's gonna be an orange item. Chest, legs, and gloves are gonna be purple stance items. Your boots are gonna be orange. I wish I had orange ones on right now. I haven't found any really good ones I like though. Your ammy and bracer is going to be orange, and then your two rings and relic are going to be purple stance. That's gonna be your main breakdown there for you when you're thinking about the long-term itemization and setup for your character. Let's go ahead and look at some orange items here that are pretty cool. I wanna go ahead and showcase some really fun modifiers that you can get, and maybe it'll spark a little bit of a build inspiration for you. So my all-time favorite ones, the ones most overpowered, we'll show here in a minute, but let's show some other kind of interesting off-the-wall modifiers here. So this one is a fellowship item. When completing a rupture, other active fellowship members gain 1% of their current level XP. Not super crazy, but kind of cool that they're factoring in the fellowship part of the game, which is kind of like guilds. But yeah, we're not gonna talk about that in this video. We're gonna stick to these really cool modifiers. Here's one that all of your offhands have a 100% proc chance. I think this one would be really good early game if you could get your crafting up high enough early on to get this modifier, I think it'd be pretty cool. But later on, I mean, your proc chance is gonna be so high, especially if you're running three of the same skill, it's always gonna be up anyway, so it's not that great. This one was pretty cool. This one, you move slower, but you gain 500 damage. Watch how slow you move with this. You move so much slower. And there's so many other modifiers that are just better because just 500 damage is really not worth it. There's so many better options. Here's another one you gain 500 damage, but you don't have any energy. This one's all right if you're just doing like a basic attack thing, which I mean, it works. But again, 500 damage doesn't really do anything. That doesn't really scale off anything either. So it doesn't feel that good to use. Here's another one. This one's pretty cool. And I think maybe if you could find something else that would factor in rolls, it might be cool. But when you roll, you have a chance to do an ability. My issue is with this is it's literally just a random ability. So if you're running a fire build and you're just doing like lightning and arcane abilities, I just don't really see, I guess, the use of that. But, you know, it's unique and it's pretty cool, right? This one's pretty cool. For every two points in wisdom, you get 1% health. So I haven't tested this one, but I just thought while recording, this might be kind of cool because wisdom gives you bonus XP, right? So what you could do is instead of putting everything in stamina for straight up health, you could put all those points then into wisdom and see how much health you get back. I think it'd probably be a little bit less health, but yeah, right. Uh, I have not tested that, but maybe in the future I will. Here's another fun one. Every few seconds, your character will pulse with exploding energy. This one sounded really cool, but the pulse just doesn't, do any damage to be like worth it at all like i mean i'm hitting for like 20 30 million so you know 164k is really nothing but hey it's kind of cool that it exists i wish i could scale it in some way though this one has a chance to spawn a mecha golem that's equipped with flamethrowers i've used this one and the damage on it is just not very good and the spawn chance is also very low there's another one I found that also had a chance to summon a lightning dog. And same thing with that. Again, I'm not a lightning build, but I can already tell that it has a very low spawn chance and the damage probably wouldn't be as great as some of these other options you have. This one's pretty cool. So this is your flame dragon. So let me go ahead and show you what flame dragons looks like by default. 
So there's a flame dragon right there. You can see how he's kind of like transparent and stuff. Now, if we go ahead and throw on this amulet, this is going to turn your flame dragons into actual drakes. <laughs> so it already just looks cool. But the fact they're drakes, they stay on the field longer. Now, this does not make them do any more damage. But here, I just want to kind of show you the cosmetic difference you can see right there. Those are the actual drakes. They look pretty cool, but again, the damage was not enough for me. I don't know, as I'm sitting here recording and kind of testing a little bit more in depth, it, I think that the drakes actually do a little bit more damage, but again, not enough damage to compete with some of these other options. I'm gonna show you here in a second. Before we get to my all-time favorite top tier mods, though, I wanted to show off this item. Since this video is about crafting, here's an item you could look out for that doesn't have a special modifier, but instead rolled really well. This one you can see has fire damage, lightning damage, and arcane damage. And the reason it's really good to have a triple roll like that is because once you've leveled up your pet, and if you don't know how to level up your pet, I do have a pet guide. You should check that one out if you haven't yet after you watch this video. But your pet, you can actually get, get it so that your fire abilities benefit from your lightning and arcane bonuses. So if you think about it, I'm getting a triple damage bonus to my fire abilities. Pretty cool roll on that helmet. I was, uh, I'm holding on to that one. All right, the moment you've been waiting for, what are the best mods in the game? And I'm gonna show you three of my favorite so far. I don't think I've found every mod in the game so far, so it's really hard to see. These are my three or four personal favorite modifiers in the game currently. So currently I am running a time essence setup here and it's really good every mob that you kill in a rupture will give time essence over here on your bracers you have each time that you gain an essence you get an extra essence so every mob you kill you gain two essences pretty pretty cool pretty good and this really does speed up what i'm trying to just push through rather it be if i'm you know farming for time essences or whatever it is it helps to really get through the ruptures quicker but in terms of power there are better options this amulet's really good. You get 1% damage bonus for each extra inventory slot. This one I know is definitely one of the top tier modifiers. And over on your skill tree, you can get loads more inventory from the passive tree over here. But that one is really good. And if we pop it on, you can actually see how much damage and combat rating this is going to go by. So right now I'm at 10K. And if we pop that on, we go up to 13.6k, 211 combat rating. Pretty powerful stuff. The other one that's pretty good here is crit damage for each 10 armor points. Now, keep in mind, this is increased and not added. So it will be 1% of your current crit damage for each 10 armor points. I know it's confusing, but the point of it is, if you look at how much armor you have, you would think that I would get 1,239 more crit damage. That's not the case. I would Instead, I would get 1,239% more of my crit damage. And you can see what I mean right here. So this is not just going to go up to 2.8K. If it does, that'd be awesome. Instead, it only goes up by 200%. And if you do the math, 1,243% of... This amount of crit damage is about 200 so but again crit damage is amazing in this game and you can see that's already reflected right here just from our combat rating see so yeah, if i'm just farming ruptures i will just run the essences if i need a bit more damage and a more of a push run then i will pop on these two for that bit more combat damage those are some highlight modifiers that i think are really fun in this game there's loads more. Just so you can get back to grinding, Dwarven Realms, and checking out our other YouTube videos about the game. Let's go ahead and wrap it up there. That's going to wrap it up for this Dwarven Realms crafting video. Hopefully you found this to be entertaining, and hopefully you've learned something here as well. If you think I've earned your subscription today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to the channel so you don't miss any more action RPG videos. If you really enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button. And the best way to support me is through becoming a channel member or hitting that super thanks down below on the video. But your view alone means the absolute world. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.